In this video from IT Free Training, I will look at the different types of messages that a DHCP server uses. Understanding the different types of messages that a DHCP server uses will help you better understand how DHCP works. In order for a DHCP client and a DHCP server to communicate, a DHCP message must be sent over the network. With a DHCP server using the IP4 protocol, there are eight different messages as shown. I will go through each of them before looking at the IP6 DHCP message types. In this video, I will only have a quick look at what each message type does. In later videos, I will look at how multiple DHCP messages are used together to configure a computer. The first message type is the Discover message. In IP4, this is a broadcast that is sent on the network. A broadcast is required because the device does not have any network configuration. The Discover message is the device requesting network configuration. Essentially, the Discover message goes to all devices on the network saying, I have not had any network configuration and I am looking for a DHCP server. The next message I will look at is the Offer message. This is where the DHCP server offers an IP address to the device. It seems pretty simple, but remember, the Discovery message was a broadcast, so it is possible for multiple DHCP servers to respond to the same device. The offer message may be a unicast or a broadcast. The device can request either. The choice which to use is ultimately made by the DHCP server. The next message type is the request message. The device will send a broadcast message on the network saying it would like to use the network configuration that it has received in the offer message. The advantage of using a broadcast is that other DHCP servers on the network will receive the broadcast and withdraw any other offers that have been sent to the device. The next message type is the acknowledgement message. This is when the DHCP server informs the device that it can use the IP address. This could be a broadcast or unicast message. The acknowledgement message also contains additional network configuration. For example, DNS and gateway IP addresses. You will see in later videos that there is a lot of configuration that can be configured using DHCP. The acknowledgement message provides this configuration. The next message type is the negative acknowledgement message. This message tells the device that it cannot use that IP address. This could happen if the device is trying to use an IP address that the DHCP server has allocated to a different device. The process of configuring a device's networking using DHCP takes microseconds. For this reason, negative acknowledgement messages should be very rare. However, if this were to occur, the device, when it receives this message, would start the DHCP process from the beginning and try again. In later videos, I will look at how a device is required to renew its IP address after a certain amount of time. You may see a negative acknowledgement message when the device attempts to renew its IP address and the IP address is no longer available. This will generally happen when the administrator has changed the configuration on the DHCP server. For example, the administrator wants to use the IP address for something else, so removes it from the available IP addresses that can be used. The next message type is the decline message. After a device receives an IP address, it next checks the network to make sure that no other device is using that IP address. If it detects the IP address is in use, it will send a decline message to the DHCP server. When the DHCP server receives the decline message, it should mark this IP address as in use and not attempt to allocate it again. The next message type is the release message. The device sends this message to the DHCP server to tell the DHCP server it no longer requires that IP address. This can manually be performed by the administrator. Most operating systems will remember the last IP address that they were allocated when they are shut down or restarted. When the operating system starts back up again, the operating system will attempt to continue using that IP address. The operating system can be configured to release an IP address when the operating system is shut down. An administrator may configure this option when a network is running out of IP addresses and they are trying to make the best use of the IP addresses that they have. The last message type I will look at is the information message. This message is used to provide additional network configuration. For example, proxy settings. 
Some settings cannot be allocated using the other message types. Also, consider that settings like proxy settings could be requested at any time. The other message types are designed to provide the device network configuration when the device first starts up, not configuration it may require later on. The next message types I will look at are the DHCP6 message types, of which there are 23. Don't worry, I won't go through them all. I will just look at the main differences between DHCP IP4 and IP6. The messages used for obtaining an IP address and initial configuration are very similar. If all goes well, there are four messages that go over the network in IP4 and IP6 in order for a device to obtain network configuration. In later videos, I will look at this process in more detail. You can see here how the name changes for the message. However, the function of each message is essentially the same. To obtain an IP address, regardless of if IP4 or IP6 is used, there are at least four messages required to be sent across the network. Essentially, IP4 and IP6 DHCP achieve the same result. There are some other changes and features in IP6 that I will cover in more detail in later videos. That covers it for the basic message types used in DHCP. In the next video, I will have a closer look at the differences between DHCP for IP4 and DHCP for IP6. Until that video, I would like to thank you for watching.